Yehovah Malak, Olam Olamat, Yehovah Malak, Yami Rakes. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lilian Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself upward unto Lord God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth a very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inherent great word of truth Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to understand that we are not worth anything apart from the grace of the Lord our God bestowed upon us and to examine ourselves as such. How are we knowing God rather than knowing about God, working in His energy, being bold enough to preach His truth and having every day for us that great contentment to stand before his presence without fault, without blame. And like Naketas, the word which has been used in Colossians 1, so that when we are standing beside him as a wife, when she is going to stand beside her husband, even we, the church being his wife, have to be standing beside him, he says in Colossians 1, verses 21, teaching to us that we need to be Hagios, Amomas, and Agnaketas. And these are the things which are most essential for us. Are we really worth enough to stand beside Him? Since He has made us in His own image, calling us to conform to the image of His dear beloved Son, He makes every believer to be available to the praise of His glory. Given to us the great prayer of Paul to privileges, and when we go back home, need not to be ashamed, but rather we should be the people as New Testament grammatic as scribes. And in return, we should be the people to the praise of His glory in making disciples of all the nations. Thus given to us such great burden in this church age because of the taunt which Satan puts in Luke chapter 4 in verse number 6, saying, To whosoever I will, I will give this power, exousia, but Christ our Lord our God says, I have received all the dunamis power in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20 and the exousia authority I give to you and I am sending you in the name of my Christ, in the name of my Father, to be the disciples and make disciples by using that power and authority given to you by me. And that's what we are having a great burden. Every day we need to cross check our life. As Christ our Lord our God prayed for us, in John chapter 17, he says in verse number 6, They have kept thy word. And in comparison to Isaiah 48, 11, what we are reading day before yesterday, or yesterday as well, how we could profane his words. The word what we meant to say profane. We have been looking in the Hebrew that is called not to prostitute, not to defile, not to contaminate, but rather also not to break up his word. And the word what Christ our Lord our God has prayed on behalf of us that we the church will pay in full the praise of his glory. We need to be available to think and to understand what a great worth of prayer Christ had prayed for us that we have kept his word. Understanding these things to the praise of his glory, we shall continue after this prayer. Prior to that, use the prayers of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and understand what is the right burden, why we have been kept alive, not just to witness, 
but to witness all the words of this life in this temple of Christ. And all the words of this life resembles each and everything what Lord God has intended for us in the church age to train the flock of the Lord. And all the words of this life where you and I have been kept alive in this church age demands that from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 as a bona fide gifted pastor teacher we need to train you up and in return being believers in Christ you need to grow up in that by understanding that our rewards are in the hands of Lord God and is going to give us according to our work what we have done. It's his sponsored program for us. It is his grace laid down upon us. We cannot wag our tails and say, Lord, we will do this. But in return, as per Deuteronomy 27, 9, he says that keep quiet or take heed, observe quietly all the words which Christ our Lord our God has taught us. The problem with us is, as Elijah spoke, the illness of those people, showing to that they are not very well enough to be in the standards of Bible doctrine. So even we today, having the pain in our heart, not to meet the standards of Bible doctrine, so-called revadas, so-called pastors and teachers, those who haven't understood the burden of Lord God like the way how Paul came along to preach the truth, the burden what he laid down upon us, a man who has been completely changed, the man who was not the same Saul, but he became Paul. In fact, indeed, we need to learn these lessons in our life, the way how even we have been called to change our whole way of life and put on the new man and work the deeds of the mighty Lord our God to the highest of his glory. But we haven't come to change. Our inner nature is having same duplicity because we act in front of others singleness but inside we are ravenous wolves. We are having the duplicity. Our eyesight is not single. Thus we are not able to illuminate the entire body in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations and seek the truth. We haven't come to understand what is this illumination, what is this singleness of eye. The singleness of eye, the Greek word used haplos only twice in the entire New Testament, once in Matthew 6.22 and the other one in Luke 11, 34, it teaches to us that a Christian cannot be a stupid. Haplos meant to say, a Christian cannot be a stupid, but rather he has to be prudent enough to understand the things of this life, how to deal with the fellow Christians, how to deal with the fellow humans, how to deal with the circumstances of life. That's what half loss is meant to say. How we can be single if we are not in one accord, in one mind, in one spirit, all the days of our life in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot be single. We will have all the time heterodidascalas, differentiations of doctrines. Why? Because we are not worshipping the truth in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, though these are the days of Lord God the Holy Spirit and demanding every believer, if ever they live, you need to live in the Holy Spirit. If ever you walk, you need to walk in the Holy Spirit. And if ever you not only just to walk, he says in Galatians 5, I zoma pneumati pneumati casta, I can't. He wants us to walk and just not to walk, but he wants us to march in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, dear brethren, your duplicity will not work. The duplicity may be needed in the presence of this world to impress them, but not before my Christ. Everything seems to be naked before him. Even the hidden thoughts, the thoughts what you think they are right, the thoughts what you think they are correct, the thoughts what you think, I can ask the Lord in such and such manner for my sin as forgiveness. No. Even the imaginations behind those thoughts, he knows very well. Thus he is training us up to come to enter into that bold throne of grace every day renovating the standards of your thinking. Every day. The problem with us is they don't believe. 
why we have to train the flock of my Christ every day. Christ our Lord our God himself has said, if we would obey my word, conforming to his image, and if we would believe, you would do greater things than me. He said those words. And in Matthew 11, 11 and 12, he teaches to us if John the Baptist is the dividing line between the Old Testament and as well as the New Testament, calling to inform us no one is greater than John the Baptist, the one who has been born to a woman among the Old Testament prophets. Though you are least, though you are great, though you are been born in this kingdom of Christ, in this church age, even the least one is far greater than John the Baptist. And we need to look at the examples of Apostle Paul penning for us in the book of Acts to look upon the deeds of Stephen. He teaches to us writing through Luke. Therefore, he says a word, Theophilos. The word Theophilos, lover of God, they may say, but it has to be a strong love. When your soul has been completely transformed into the standards of human viewpoint, into divine viewpoint. It has to be something great when we use the word Theos plus Philos, a combination of two words. We are not talking about the agape love, we are talking about the love of Philos. And here he mentions to us the word Philos in a very essence way, wherewith people today are thinking agape love agape love are the demands of bible doctrine philos love meant to say lord i have completed that agape love demands and i'm practically proving that life and that meant to say not only lord i have preached the gospel in return i have made disciples these are the witnesses and in return these disciples have grown up to become grammatias or scribes and they're marching ahead to make disciples that's the word meant to say Philos. If you want to if you want to pass an examination, if it is thirty five percent of marks, if that's the minimum qualification to pass the examination marks, you say Philos love meant to say, Lord, I have seventy percent of marks. Therefore, he writes that in Acts chapter six, covering to us about the man Stephen. They couldn't withstand Iscom. The manifestation of the wisdom in whatever they want to talk about my Christ. They couldn't stand in wisdom what Stephen spoke to them. And that's the power given to us in the church age. Because John the Baptist, in comparison to John the Baptist, now we come to the first martyr Stephen. And afterwards, this first martyr Stephen, we look unto the words of my Christ, who said, you can do greater things than me. And the power given to us, whatsoever you bind on this earth will be bound in the heaven, and whatsoever released on this earth will be released in the heaven. And if that sun was a reason for cause to rise and to fall many nations, calling many sons unto his glory in this church, he has called us to bind on this earth the things to bound in the heaven, to release the things on this earth, to release the things in the heaven. And we have something unique. We have something great. We cannot talk in the same standards what the way this Christendom has been led away today into astray. They are not able to keep up the words of my Christ. Therefore, he says in Isaiah 48, for us a great admonition. Whenever we use the relative pronoun my, it is meant to say possession. And here he says, for my sake, yeah, even for my own sake. Now, through his son being crushed for us, given us this church age in the form of grace, which we don't deserve, which we don't turn, which we don't look. And yet, Lord God has given to us this great burden. And though in this church age he has given to us to go and make disciples, we ourselves are not grown up to be disciples. We are not minding what is the word grammatias to be disciples. We are not even cross-checking what the word says for disciples. We are just entrusted to become nominal Christians because in some of the Bibles, in the present translations, they use for 
Mathates as Christians. That's very wrong. We have to go back and put our foundation in the original Greek. What does it mean to say? If not, better shut the mouth and don't talk and don't preach because it is not for the people who are entertaining clowns or oratories who are in the standards of sheer what of their experiences to preach. No. Neither to train them up to sing and dance. Right from the day one till to the rapture of the church and even after the millennium rule, the word of the Lord our God teaches the past dispensation for the Levites it is to teach, the present dispensation pastor teaches it is to teach, 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 kerusothon logan, preach the word and teach the word. In the past dispensation it's Lama Banthano plus Didasco. In the present dispensation it is also the same process of Ephesians 4, 12 and 13, which is nothing but Mantano plus Didasco. And if the Lord's will for us in his compassion of Mark 6, 34, we should prick our heart. He saw the probata, that is the flock, without the shepherd, the sheep without the shepherd, moving with compassion. What did he do? He came and taught the word. And what did he taught? Many things, Paula, much. He taught them many things so that the disciples will come and remind him, Lord, they have to go far away, the time is gone. That meant to say to teach many things, it takes time. Though you may look the miracles being done by the Lord and you may count there were seven baskets of the bread that was left over, we are not worried about that. The reason there why the disciples come and remind my Christ is that we need to understand it takes time to teach many things. If I shave off my head, maybe this is the third week, it takes time to get my same beard and hairs which was for more than five or seven months. It will take minimum sometimes even one year, isn't it? It takes time. In the same manner when Christ our Lord our God was training them up, it took time and the disciples come to him and what for they come they come to say him lord the time what you're training them up is much and they have to go a long way and then he teaches to them a lesson for us that lord god is a provider no matter what the situations may be the first thing we need to be occupied in the third hour, in the fourth hour, he says, when I come, I want you to be fine in teaching the word of the Lord. And when the day was now far spent, we read in Mark 6, 35, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place, and now the time is far past. That means to teach many things, it will take time. Therefore, right from the day of your salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone, till the day you die, as we read in Job, Job chapter 14 in verse number 2 through 4, our days, our months, is been accounted already in the sight of the Lord, so that he knows the sooner the better to reach spiritual maturity because the time what you have been given when you reach spiritual maturity you in return have been burdened to preach the gospel to make disciples and to witness in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit all the days of your life on this earth and you will not and you will not spend your time in vain things or vague things because that's the grace of the Lord it is not yours your body is not of your own, he said, so that you need to glorify Christ in your flesh. Far less you think the time that you're spending that you may pass down from childhood to adulthood, from adulthood to manhood, from manhood to again old age. You may think this is the time which you have spent. But for every day what you spend, right when you cross the age of 33, because Christ of Lord our God survived for 33, and the very next day what you live after 33, it is the day of my Christ you are spending, and you need to be alert if Christ of Lord our God would be here, how he would be, how, what he would be willing, what he he would be want us to teach and what he would teach where he would go doesn't he teach in his in his episode in his gospels i have come here not only to stay in this one village i have come here to go and preach these things in many villages that have no media but now we have the media preaching in one point in youtube you can go through the entire world 
and the people may be happy to look and concentrate on the standards of their viewpoint to be noticed through some satellite channels you have to pay so much to preach but gospel is free now we have YouTube that is free putting a monthly package or one year subscription to the data package which has been available to you you can go through the YouTube if the data is more you have your mp3 to video converter anything's in the apps you can find them you download it convert this tape or this video into that audio file and listen see how gracious of a lot of a god is and we are not here only to sit at one place if christ would our lord of a god would be here he would gone what he would do and what he would perform that should be our attitude now that should be our thinking now but we think we are surviving for so many days and you are not aware after the day of salvation till to the time of your death this time has been given for us to preach all the words of this law or the Bible at least like the parrots because the parrots paraphrase the words what the master is training them up and here we find in Psalm 119 in verse number 13 through my mouth, O Lord, through my lips, O Lord, I want to declare all the judgments. When will we declare the judgments of the Lord when we do not know what is His mind? We just think we are happy to spend our time on this earth, thinking this could be right, that could be right, and that procedure could be correct, this procedure could be correct. We are not here for this. We are here to grow up in Christ. We are here to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine conforming to the image of His dear beloved Son. We are here to come to the full mature stature of Christ. We are here being kept alive, predestined, so that we need to master the entire Bible in the prescribed time for you where your days and months have been accounted and for every day you are available to the Lord's glory and to the Lord's grace answerable at the judgment seat of Christ and if your answer does not match to the glory of Lord God he would either call you workers of iniquity using the grace of the Lord of our God in vain and yet no rewards because being saved on Christ since foundation is only one at on the other hand he would say good and faithful steward sit at my right hand in little things you are faithful and I've appointed you to be faithful for many things and we need to be aware doesn't he teach for us in the Look, gospel, that which is not yours, you're not being faithful in that. How he would give to you that which is others. We have read that in comparison to look. That which belongs to you, you are not faithful. Then how would Lord God give those things that which belongs to Christ? That's the very great reference we find in Ephesians 3 verses 8 through 11. What does it belong to us? And what does he teach to us? The things that belong to us are this mystery, unsearchable, unfathomable, or much variegated wisdom of my Christ in the various departments, what we need to conquer, what we need to be available if Christ our Lord our God would be here alive, what he would do, and how he would ask us to walk. As a Christian, you need to understand the word, you are a little Christ. If there is no Christ in you, you are nothing. And if you aren't a disciple, be alert to become a disciple. Don't look into the dogmas what the man has made to teach you the fear of the concepts of Yahweh, which are not according to the mind of Christ, but according to the mind of men, so that you think weekly ones, monthly ones, and praising some other idiotic morons who are not even believers in Christ would help you that you are doing the work of the Lord. You are in return preaching to those unbelievers lies, the way, the truth, the life, saith my Christ is my Lord. And if you don't tell them believing in Christ, you will be saved and if you don't believe in Christ you will be put to death the greatest decision of all is what we make in this life is to believe in the Christ of our Lord no matter however great that unbeliever may be in his moral standards in his thinking without believing in Christ the result will be absolutely hell whether they accept it or reject it we are least bothered don't top them with untempered mortar saying that they're one step closer because of their achievements and they will be given a seat in the heaven. And the way what we read and the way what we learn and the way what we understand. 
since you haven't been mature enough to be grammatias, since you haven't been that which word, the word of the Lord of God teaches to us, you think your standards being taught according to the precepts of men to be the fear of the Lord. Dear brethren, the time that has been given to us in this church age is very, very far spent away. We are almost all 2,000 years, and by 2033 it would be. We are waiting to look at 2020, isn't it? <laughs> when once you start to kneel down and write the Bible upon your knees in the original language of the scriptures, you will not understand how your 10 years of life has went or passed away. The world may be looking that ring in new one, ring out old one. When you ring in the new one, you may think you're expecting something new, but while you were old, even that old year was new to you, isn't it? What did you not achieve in the old year? How do you think you can achieve that in the new year? <laughs> the same thing what we find in Luke chapter 13, the gardener asking the Lord, give him permission, Lord, one year, once again I will dig, once again I will put the manure. If they don't produce the fruit, O oh Lord, then cut off. It's not worth. Christ, O oh Lord, our God, in His grace, if He has seen you to be alive tomorrow fit, just cross-check your heart. What you need to ring in, what you need to ring out. You need to change the transformation. That is what you need to renovate the standards of your thinking. If you don't renovate the standards of your thinking, metamorphomai, then you are ringing in and ringing out doesn't make any difference except you put one year old. Except you may come in the way that you want to prove the world that you are also well off in your dresses that you wear and show forth how great you are. Adoration is outward, but inward you are 0, 0, 0, 0 to the grace of my Christ. Don't waste this gracious time. If you are prepared, if you are well enough to boast, if you know the word of the Lord of a God, the details of life, the relationships where you have been placed on this earth will be a very meaningful one. If you haven't known the grace of my Christ, if you haven't been mature enough in the word of the Lord of our God to look the divine viewpoint perspective, the grace that has been given to you will be used in only vain glory. You may think what you have learned is great, but if you don't match what the Bible says, even I will be wrong. If the Bible says, come every day to teach the word of the Lord of our God, Zephaniah 3, 5, you need to come. If the Bible says every day, moment by moment, Lord God is going to examine us, Job 7, 17 and 18, we need to be there. If the Bible says in Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, day by day, you need to come and stand before the presence of Lord God to learn his doctrine, then you need to be there. If the Bible says where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of our God, there the people will perish then you need to be looking upon what the Bible has to say for us every day. If it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed, day by day they need to be alert. Christ our Lord of God himself in Luke 19, 47 and 48 speaks about when he cleansed the temple, throwing out those money changers, the way how they made it a den of thieves, kleptes and lustes were there. He says, throwing them out, he taught them the word of the Lord of God every day. Then how much more we need to be alert today because now the churches have become Satan's synagogue, Satan's throne has been established and Satan's copulation point has been there, he says in Revelation 2 and 3, then how much more and intense our every thought has to be brought into captivity for Christ by renovating our thinking in the standards of Bible doctrine. How much more? If Christ of the Lord of our God during his time on this earth, he said, you have made den of thieves, you throw them out. He said, this is the house of my prayer, not a market for your robbers to do business. Today they have been occupied with such men in our pulpits, thinking that they have established the church in their name and do not even know what is the work of the elders in that. In Deuteronomy 27, 8 we learn what is the work of eldership, what is the duty of eldership. You need to write all the words of the law upon the stone. 
and we don't engrave even a single word upon our heart. Sami says in 119 of his word, I have treasured the word as a precious treasure in my heart. I have kept it because I don't want to sin against the old Lord. I don't want to sin against thee, he said. I have treasured, treasured it up, diligently sought it and treasured. And yet when we look, we are concerned. <laughs> the details of life to be treasured in our memory. What we need to do tomorrow? What about a future plan for our kids? How much salary are you earning? Where are your savings? Where you treasure up? Treasure upon this earth where there are robbers and moths which eat up and they steal away. Don't worry. Every grace of your time that has been given to you, if you waste it in vain, you are answerable to the Lord God, not never to me. We are only here blowing the trumpet to see that you would be perfect and complete in the praise of his glory when you come in his presence. We are not at all worried what you think, because what God thinks, that makes the difference. If Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, the words what he spoke to them, if you don't consider that to be worth enough in your life, that makes the difference. What we are, we are only the man. Today we are tomorrow someone who is fit in the, in the sight of the Lord as Elijah thought. Though he was being taught a great lesson not to quit the ministry. He says three king, one king and then the other one Jehu and afterwards Elisha. If he's been escaping from Hazel, he will be slayed by Jehu. If he's been escaped by Jehu, he will be slayed by Elisha. And Elisha asks a very great thing to ask, Lord, show me and give me double portion of thy spirit. And then he says, if he would have a clause condition there. And he teaches to us, the clause condition is that if you would see me taken up in the heaven and the mantle falls upon you, then he will have it. Because the ministry of Elijah was great. If I would believe he was in the spirit of Elijah, he said, when they cry out about John the Baptist and the disciples come to teach what he taught and what he made. John the Baptist indeed had disciples. They came to my Christ, we read in Mark 6, in 30th verse. What did he teach? What did they do? What they practiced? Being a pastor teacher doesn't mean we come over here only for your belly. We come over here only to give you blessings. We come over here to make your lives in accord with the will of the Lord. If not, we are answerable for every perishing soul. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, for three years in that place of Ephesus, being there to teach the word of the Lord of a God, I have not sent to declare to you the entire council of Bible doctrine, entire council. Therefore, I am free from your blood. Let your blood be upon your own head. He paid his own rent with his own hands. Today, potty belly pastors seeking in search of the survival in the pulpits with the so-called standards of the theological ranks, with the teachings of the entertaining clowns rather than exegesis and isagogics and categories of the word in the concepts of exegetical truth. They have entertaining the pulpits with their pastoral gimmicks and tricks and calling themselves to be Ravidas. Reverends and doctorates, which is not at all a legitimate title for us to hold. When you have fallen down from such great principle of your life, how you could be pure from the blood of this flock? Have you come with the burden of the Lord? Without true repentance, without true change of mind. The same Saul earlier before he could become Paul, he had a zeal persecuting the church. After becoming Paul, he was no longer to make the church to suffer but rather he was a man to build up the church. And we find that in the mystery epistles and a great evidence given to us by Peter. 
in Second Peter 3 teaching to us. Those who are Amatates and Asthenas, that is those who are no disciples to come every day to take the word of the Lord of our God, and those who don't have the strength in abiding that for every day, he says, they use the remaining scriptures as well for their own destruction. The things that have been hidden with the wise men of the world and the kings of the earth, he says, now it has been revealed to us, we being babes. And to us this mystery has been given to us so that we could be the people not to be in the standards any longer following the world, but rather we should be the people as light luminaries shining in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations, as holding forth the word of the Lord of our God and doing that which is for greatest glory of Christ. And if we don't learn the scriptures, don't understand the scriptures, he teaches to us in 2 Peter 3.16, they use the other scriptures, that is, the writings of the word of the Lord, unto their own destructions, apolia. Do you know what is that? Utter destruction. And then, the destruction which consists of eternal misery in hell. It's a great loss. It's a destruction, what you have lost because of your perineous ways. Therefore, why we say to you, the man who became from Saul to Paul, his epistles in the mystery doctrine is too vast. Because those who are unlearned and don't have the strength to come and join everyday Bible class. He says those who are unlearned, they use the remaining scriptures for their own destruction. By that we meant to say what? The level of thinking, what you're thinking is not the same in the sight of Christ. The world is in search of this physical human anatomy to look what does it respond, how does it respond. Christ the Lord of our God said long back making in his image, they have only one thing, this body itself is a miracle. If they want to look what is my Christ or how does God the Father be, he said, if you look me, you are looking Father. So they have only one thing on this earth as examples, that's we the human flesh. And they're not able to make a complete discovery about this human flesh, about this human anatomy. Though we find a great pain in Ezekiel 37 8, when he says, Lord, every day if a pastor teacher doesn't pray for that, Lord, they have to come skin to skin, flesh to flesh, tendons to tendons, ligament to ligaments. They have to come bone to bone, they have to come leather to leather. And yet there was no spirit in them. This is the burden of the pastor teacher to produce in you perfect and complete, he says in Colossians 1, 24 through 29. The problem with us is you're not going to the proper procedure of Bible doctrine to understand what is that pain which Christ our Lord of our God has gone through his mental agony rather than the vicarious sufferings. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, a little part that I need to pay to the body of my Christ in those mental sufferings. Because many haven't become disciples by looking upon the time they should be the communicators of Bible doctrine. Rather than that, they have become the idiotic morons, wasting their grace in vain. If the pastor teacher doesn't come to train you up from Genesis 1-1 in the proper exegesis and isagogics, then you will never find them to be filled, though they were without spirit, the complete structure of the body. Bone to bone, flesh to flesh, tendons to tendons, ligaments to ligaments, marrow to marrow, skin to skin, leather to leather. And yet the church age is just wasting the grace and not understanding that when you haven't read completely this miraculous body of human being in the image of Christ, what he has made for us in his new man, we talk. when they're not able to understand the outer man in the energy of their flesh and the wisdom of their thinking, professing wise who become fools, says the Bible, how much more they would think upon the inner man, how much more they could think and imagine Christ, they cannot understand. 
Therefore, Lord God has appointed you and me to manifest Christ in our flesh through our body and show to them what is their life. Therefore, he said, He is holy, even you be holy. Therefore, he says for us in Ephesians 1 3, you like a he is only worthy of praise and expectation. And you like Ea, because it is not what we desire, but what we need the most, he has qualified us. And he says again, you Lagia. He has been indwelling in us, and to attain his object through our lives is very well sufficient. He has given us all the things in providing for us so that we could be the image of Christ to this world. There is no excuse if you don't be blessed. And furthermore, he teaches how come you could be pure like Christ. Before the foundation of the world, you have chosen to be holy and blameless. First, we need to look what we are in Christ. First, we need to look what is our position in Christ. First, we need to understand what is our mission in Christ. We need to look what is our vision in the Lord. The pastor teaches if they would train you up, what you are in Christ, what is the mission and vision of the Lord, then you will wake up to the high calling of Lord God. If not, you will use other scriptures as well for your own destruction. We shall have a word of prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look up on the pale wonders of the truth. After this prayer, we'll continue what Lord God has prepared and kept for us on today's date in His omniscient knowledge. Infinite Divine Holy Father, as we going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enter and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So in Mark 6, 34, Having without a shepherd they were, and he began to teach. The word began, Archomai, the one who is making the first one to do. And we have a role model for Christ as our life, as our leader, as our frontier, as our high priest. When he himself has began to teach many things, we cannot replace that with the world the way how they are looking along into the standards of the signs and wonders. Because in 2 Thessalonians 2 we find many people will come in my name who go along to do in the power of their signs and wonders and think they have, and think they have done really well. And they are really doing good they think. But the psalmist prays in Psalm 719, we need to look this, in verses 27 and following. If you can have your Bible open it up so that we can understand, though you have the translations, yet mark in there when we are preaching in exegesis. It says in verse number 27, the very great verse which we need to understand. Make me to understand the way of the precepts, so shall I talk of the wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen me according unto thy word, according to thy word. The word heaviness meant to say grief to God. And the word for us over here, he says in verse 29, Remove from me the way of lying. And you know what is the way of lying? We need to find that in Psalms 27 in verse number 12. Here we find the word sheker which is deception, disappointment, which is nothing but deceit and acting vainfully and wrongfully. But here in 27, we find again the same word, which has been called for us false witnesses. Who are these false witnesses? He teaches to us, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses. Again, the same word, Sheker. And do you know what is the meaning of Sheker? Spiros Zodiatus, in his notes, he writes to us to understand this Sheker. Because many of the pastor teachers today who have come to the pulpits without having the right vision of the Lord of a God, they could be called nothing less than Sheker. And do you know who are the Sheker? Who, why Samish prays, deliver me from these false witnesses? Because they themselves are worthless. And who they are? The fallen angels. They have lost their first estate. 
they have lost their first love and we are also living we are also now losing our first love by not giving number one priority for bible doctrine therefore he says from where you have fallen come back and look into that go back and save the remaining things of your flesh and go and give first love to the lord therefore we find this word coming from shakar it meant to say to cheat to deceive and to lie and to act falsely and the word meant to say for us to paint a false word and it is nothing but the nouns of duplicity the shakar people are duplicate people but Christ our Lord our God says your eyes should be single have law singleness without duplicity there is no hypocrisy so here we understand that shakar is nothing but a lie a falsehood it is nothing but in simple words fraud And that's what we read even in Psalms 33, 17, isn't it? We find this word over there for us to understand in that context of the sentence. Father, deliver me from this fraud. Because the counsel of the Lord God alone will abide forever, no matter what it is. And we need to call him in truth and in righteousness. Therefore, he teaches for us over here in Psalms. In verse number 30, a horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Comparing to an animal, he says, it's shakar, it's a fraud. We need to depend upon the Lord God because only the counsel of the Lord God will be available. And that alone will stand, no matter the heaven and the earth will vanish off. His word alone will abide forever. Therefore, how do you trust in your riches? How do you trust in your animals to think that they are great men for you to deliver? Therefore, he uses for us to understand Shekhar. 8267 code is a strong number for this. He says that deceit, deceitfulness, an unreliable thing. They did not prove their first estate. Therefore, they lost it. Therefore, he says, now you prove your love. The angels fell because they could not be for the first one. They fell. But right now for us, he says, how could you profane my name? You cannot. You cannot be an unreliable thing. Therefore, on behalf of Christ, I have sanctified you and kept apart for me. And he prayed, sanctify them through the truth. And these other people, they will keep thy word. And it has to be you that you keep the word rather than becoming an unreliable thing. And at what extent we are unreliable? Because we are looking lies upon lies. He tested the angels being headed by Lucifer, the fallen angel, the highest cherub. And yet now he calls us to fight the battle in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And he says, not just to fight the battle, but trample Satan under your feet. And that's what it is for us, the great privilege. That's our privilege. Because it proved itself it's an unreliable thing, worth for nothing, fit for nothing. And now he says, deliver me from such false witnesses. And he says for us, remove from me these lying ways. Aren't we walking in the lying ways? Who said to assemble weekly ones? The Bible says every day you need to assemble. It is the man who developed in his mind not to do that which is in accord with Bible doctrine. If they don't come to take in the word of the Lord of our God every day, no matter however great and good they may be, Bible recognizes them as shakers. It has to be every day. If they don't teach to you these things, go back and kneel down in the presence of Lord God the Father. He will give you the information that which is in accord with Bible doctrine. When he came every day to visit Adam and Adam and first they were Ish and Isha before they fall. He came every day to teach them the word of the Lord. Every day. That's his eternal plan. He was having pleasure every day with the sons of angels. We look in Proverbs 8, 31. And therefore he says, now blessed is the one who comes to look and to understand. The doctrinal discourse being taught in the church pulpit every day. And therefore we need to look this word, dear brethren, in Proverbs chapter 8. Which is nothing but blessed. And the word over here is not Barak. Asher, 
Barak meant to say to kneel down. Asia meant to say for you, you are in our happiness. As we read in Revolution, those who teach this word for them happiness, those who listen to this word is a greater happiness. In the same terms, we find over here happiness. And this happiness is for us in the spiritual blessings is great. Because Christ, Lord God the Father, planned for us what we need the most, not, we, not what we desire the most. And he has made us to be self-sustained. Being indwelt by Lord God so that what God the Father demands through our lives, it could be absolutely executed. And if you still love a lie and make a lie, he says in Revelation 22 15, these other people, they will not enter before me. Therefore, how do you love? You have to love him, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, in verse number 22, anathema, cursed is the one who doesn't love in the standards of philo teaching. Far less you think it could be acceptable without philosophy teaching in your pulpits. He says, cursed. The same thing over here, Shekhar. The one who loved to make lie to be number one priority in their standards of thinking. If it is Lord's will every day we need to be, then how many days more you will be an unreliable thing in the sight of the Lord? Doesn't he say for us during long back in Deuteronomy 6 as well as in 11, when your children are before you, train them up in the way, when they walk, when they sit, when they do those things necessary for their life on this earth, train them up in the way that, that they need to go. And can't you understand that? And what we will stand before the face of the Lord of our God being an unreliable thing. Satan lost its first estate purely because it went to become an unreliable thing. Though he trusted, adorned it with everything we read in Ezekiel 28. Before it fall, it was the Tamim one, the perfect one. But now Christ our Lord of God asks, We the flesh should be Tamim, your inner man should match to the image of Christ. What Satan had before its fall in its decoration as well, we need to be decorating ourselves not in the outward performance, what the people could look, but inward, decorating with the word of the Lord of our God to the highest. Shaker our people today in our pulpits. As Apostle Paul withstood Peter to the face, he was so bold enough. Though he was a prominent apostle to the circumcised ones, the Jews, he withstood him. He said, you are acting hypocrisy. Today, no enough guts to the pastor teachers to ask the church committee what they are performing is wrong. Doesn't he teach for us in Deuteronomy 27, 9? Take it quietly, observe quietly what the words of the law of the Lord of God are. And in that, if he says in Exodus 23, Lord God providing for you an angel, you shall not vex him, but rather you shall obey his words and be available to the praise of his glory, who is training you up every day to come. Then you will be a reliable one. Better for you to simply carry your cross and follow my Christ and continue in his word and to be his disciple. Because... The bona fide gift given to us to teach. We are answerable for every word what we talk. And every word what we talk, Lord God is the witness for it. And if every Argatha's words, the words which hasn't produced in you to change, to become the believer of my Christ, and to take up your cross and follow my Christ, and to be making you to grow from disciples to grammatias, and in return, making disciples of all the nations, if you don't come for this, and if our words do not match the sons of Lord God, then for every word what we speak, they will bear double punishment for us. Very great punishment, he says in James 3.1. Very great punishment it is. And that what are we performing in the church age? What are we looking into the standards of this church age? Shekers are more. Can you at least pray, remove from me these lying parts? Therefore, Shekhar also meant to say for us, dear brethren, that 
it is a way of life which goes completely contrary to Lord God's law or truth. It goes complete contrary to the Lord God's ways. What he wills, it goes absolutely contrary. What he minds, what he wants us to learn, it goes absolutely contrary. It doesn't be the same. It is going to be contrary, contrary, contrary. If Lord God is light, you are walking in the form of light, wearing as a sheep called, but you are ravenous wolves inside. You are walking contrary to God's truth. Looking upon this wicked judge in the present Christendom, if it were not by the grace of the Lord our God to keep us alive, none would be there to say we are walking in truth. Apostle John says for us, I am happy to know that my techna, my beloved children are walking in truth. The techna he uses the word. He doesn't use the word brafos or paideas. But he uses the word techna. Do you know why this techna? This techna, the crowd. Who would come every day to learn the word of the Lord of a God. And he says, when you walk in truth, I'm happy to hear that you're walking in truth. Techna crowd. And that's what is happening today in our pulpits. Walking contrary to Lord God's truth you are. You need to examine yourself. The sooner the better you cross check your life. We do not know when is the rapture of the church. We do not know when is our death. Cross check your life, the sooner the better. Don't waste your life. Your life is precious in the sight of the Lord. If not, you wouldn't have given you to be born on this earth. We know if we have been born by the will of Lord God the Father for what? To witness the truth not to witness the gimmicks not to witness that we are shakers like that we are unreliable things Israelites failed Christ has given us this grace, great, great grace to witness the truth of the Lord and to be his great disciples and making grammatias and becoming disciples can he call us that we are also Shekhar? If you have Shekhar verse before you, you will become Shekhar. If you are with a bad company, you will enjoy your time in bad company, thinking that that, that company is good. But it's Shekhar. What a sad path it is for us. How much we are walking contrary, not only to Lord God's law, but also to our inner mind who is there in us, indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much we are grieving, how much we are squelching, how much we are waxing, how much we are putting him to test every breath of our life. Aren't we walking contrary? How do you expect blessings? How do you expect your life to be in peace? The mankind on this earth is not able to fully look what is this human anatomy and understand what it would be. How much more you will understand the inner man dwelling in you? How much you will understand Lord God, the Holy Spirit temple we are, Shekinah truth? Don't waste your grace, dear brethren. What we have only grace. We don't turn, we don't deserve, we don't work for it. It is only the grace of the Lord called us to be fit for his work. If not, who could stand before his presence? If he hasn't qualified us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless and to walk in his truth all the days of our life in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then who could stand in his presence? It's purely his grace. We need to understand, dear brethren, how many days more. If we don't come to realize the work that has been given for us is far greater and superior than the work what the Israelites had. Israelites had to be a peculiar people, a peculiar treasure of Allah God. They were the people who were into those terms what the Israelites had. But we have something more. We have something unique. We have been called to be not only his peculiar treasure, but to be every believer, grammatias, in return producing their children as disciples to the Lord God. We have something more. 
don't waste your valuable precious grace in vain because what you eat what you drink thinking upon that looking to treasure up yourselves for your futurity is just mere useless Lord God knows what to give you the wisdom Lord God knows how to train you up Lord God knows what to do for you doesn't he send his food with a crow for his prophets doesn't he make them to pay the tax to the Caesar or Caesar from the fish when you open up to have a gold ring a gold coin in that or when you sell those fishes you get the money you come and pay or whatever may you may take he has done marvelous things in providing for us when Hagar cried he gave the water when Samson cried unto the Lord and her father he gave him the water out of the dead body which has to be rotten up he gave him the honey to eat what a marvelous thing we have why we worry about the pagans the way of the pagans worry about looking what they eat what they drink what they wear first let's look whether we are shakers whether we are unreliable men whether we are walking contrary to the Lord's way and he says my ways are superior than your ways my ways are heaven in Isaiah 55 verses 7 to 11 his ways are different his ways are not the way how you think you are he minds heavenly things, not the earthly things. Colossians 3, in his mystery epistle, he teaches. If you have risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, not the things of this world. And he says very specifically, put to death the deeds of the flesh, not just to mortify the KJ we could give you, but that's wrong. Necro, Satan, the Greek, put to death. No excuse, put to death the deeds of your flesh, then you enter into the kingdom of the Lord. The problem with us is, you haven't truly repented, you haven't truly tasted the grace of the Lord, therefore you love to grieve and squelch and sin again and again on the name of my Christ, thinking that 1 John 1 9 is therefore as a license to sin, but you will be paid for that. It's not a license to sin, it's a license to serve back my Christ. It's a license to serve the Lord. Christ of Lord of God in his agony crying out Ila Ila Lama Sabatani not because of the pain because he's breaking his fellowship now for three hours which couldn't be there in his entire eternity past to eternity future but we grieve, we squelch, we wax, Lord God the Holy Spirit, by performing sin upon sin, either by thought, word or deed, and yet we call we are holy. That's the problem with us, not having a true repentance of your heart. Not having a true essence in Christ. Not having that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord. And yet thinking that we are really correct. Put to death. Necrosate. The sooner the better. Put to death. We need to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley making up for money don't come. The root cause for all evil if it is money. Work freely there. Lord God will provide. Taste and see the grace of the Lord because only in this flesh we can taste the grace. When we go back home, there is no need what we drink, what we wear, or why we cry, or why we weep. Everything has been crystal clear for us, provided in the heaven. Qualify for that life. Don't walk contrary to the Lord, dear brethren. Don't at all walk. If once Lord God would walk contrary to us, he says, who could stand? We are receiving his smilings rather than smitings of him. 
He just passes by to say, a rebound and come back and take up your cross, first warning discipline. If you don't learn that, he gives you intensified stage of discipline till to the point of death and then releasing you. If you still don't believe in the second stages of discipline, he will give you sin unto death. Because Lord whom he loves, he chastens them. <laughs> and you need to understand up to what extent you have your love. Up to what extent you are really worthy enough. Up to what extent you are really looking in to the standards of doctrine. Therefore, dear brethren, we need to understand are we walking contrary? Are we really walking contrary? Or are we looking upon the right word of the Lord of our God to be number one priority in our pulpits? Are we contrary? If you don't examine yourself that you are walking contrary, then you would say you are really looking in truth. If you are really looking in truth, then you would be as Christ. You wouldn't waste the very grace every second of your life, but you would get every thought into captivity for Christ. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, I have not yet attained perfection. I am marching ahead, forgetting those things which are behind. Because those things which are behind, yesterday what I was in dirt, to reach his perfect holiness, learn that, come ahead. That is what he says, I'm marching ahead. And what you have been dirt, look into it. And furthermore, not only walking complete contrary to the Lord of a God, it shows groundless words or activities which have no basis in fact or reality. Completely worthless words. Groundless words or activities which have no basis at all in it. Which have no basis at all in it. What they talk, it's a groundless. What they talk, it's a baseless. These are shaker. Why we call them it's a groundless and baseless? Because they're not going for the exegesis. They have formulated themselves. The way of salvation should be like this. They formulated themselves by works we can save. They formulated themselves to say, by taking baptism, you have been saved. No. Christ our Lord our God was been ordained in his baptism for the work that has been laid down before him. And the work that has been laid down before him, he is now ready to die like a martyr, and he did it. Don't think just having emotion in the baptism will cause you to be saved. No. Always right from the beginning, faith alone in Christ alone. That's what it is, our salvation. When you're coming to take as a baptism, it meant to say for you, you've already grown up to be a disciple, like the haploids of the Greek, what they were, and they used to make the spear to go through that pig blood, they used to dip and they come out. Earlier that spear didn't have a purpose, but now after being trained, looking the blood of the, or, or being dipped into the blood, or tasted the blood into that spear, the one who is a haploid or a soldier would say, now my life, I am here to die, for, for the people of this land because um, I have been baptized in the blood of my enemy. And I will look the blood of my enemy. Earlier I had no purpose, but now as this spear saw the blood, tasted the blood, so now I have a purpose to see and taste the death of my enemy. That's what baptism is all about. It's not a way of salvation because they don't go back to the process of exegesis. They just have groundless activities and groundless and baseless teachings. The missionaries who had come to my country, India, no matter whatever they may be, either Baptist or any other thing for the Lutheranist, we are not going and talking over about the denominations. They would have straight the way thought as Erasmus told them to exegete the world. Give them the right truth. And today we would have been free from many errors in our pulpits. Though they may know the word, they use the word, but they do not know the meaning behind that. And they have been taught many times those same words. Redemption through the blood of my Christ, knowing not what is that redemption. Expiation, propitiation, 
unlimited atonement, justification. They do not know. They just use those words. And some say, I am Baptist. Some say, I am Lutheranist. They do not even know what is the work of a Baptist. The work of the Baptist is to baptize others and make them to be martyrs for Christ. That's what it meant to say. And yet they think they are really great. This is the great failure in our pulpits because any argument what they have, it's purely baseless, groundless, worthless. It's completely worthless organizations what these people are running without exegesis. They're completely baseless. They're completely shaker. Therefore, the psalmist prays for us in Psalm 119, in verse number 29, remove from me these lying words. Shaker words, the words which are not worth at all. Therefore, it teaches for us very specifically that the way how false witnesses will rise up against you and they breathe out cruelty, he says. But here he says, remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy Torah, how graciously. Again, the word for us to be showing favor and pity. Since Lord God has shown us this favor and pity, we are in that kindness of the Lord of our God. He has given to us in this church age the pleur of paltable privileges to the highest. Completely he has given to us. So he says, grant me thy law graciously. What a great truth it is for us. Granting the law of the Lord of a God, what we ask to be graciously to the praise of his glory. And yet what are we looking today in our pulpits? We are still confining ourselves into the standards of Sheker. Psalmist says, remove. The word remove, so that is to depart, to turn aside, to put me on the right track rather than making me to be rebellion. Remove me, O Lord. Remove this ways. Put me in the right path, put me in the right road. And yet, what are we finding today in our pulpits? We need to thoroughly understand how many days more wearing the mask of hypocritical standards. How many days more you want to walk completely contrary to the Lord's truth. How many days more you want to have your reasoning completely groundless and baseless. And how many days more you want to be proving yourself that you are an unreliable thing in the sight of the Lord. Dear brethren, our life is unique. The calling for us in the church age, being blessed as you legate us, is unique. Do not waste your grace in vain. Use it for the greater glory of Lord God, as Apostle Paul says. I have not used his, vain, his grace in vain, but rather I've used it for the glory of the Lord. We have a lot many things to learn, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten to teach and to learn as he leads us we shall come back and continue tomorrow to the praise of his glory which way you want to go you decide with our headboard and eyes closed the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ my Lord my Rock my Savior that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to kerusothan lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamatrima witnesses wherewith you have been called. Number one diamatrima witnesses is in Wellingtonity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two, dear martyrs, my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. Therefore, dear brethren, the gracious grace that has been bestowed upon us to the praise of his glory, let's use for it to the work of him to the highest, rather than using it 
as a lie and making yourselves to be shakers. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leads us to understand the praise of His glory to the highest. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us, O oh Lord, not to be in the standards of Sheikh cares, but rather, Lord, you have cleansed us and kept up us, kept us apart for the work of being holy, Agios, Amomas, and Agnaketas, to stand beside thee side by side. Father, what a great privilege it will be for us in the corporate witness of the truth to stand and to be as the Lord's wife. Let a lot of this earth you have given to us to build up as living stones to thy work. Only for the work, O oh Lord, and nothing else on this earth. So, Father, search us diligently and see if there is an offense to us, O Lord. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, purest, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen. Grace be with you all.